In this video, we're going to look at conditional probability. This is going to follow on from my previous video on probability tree diagrams, so if you haven't done so, I'd recommend watching that first. As always, there's a link in this video's description. Let's have a look at a question. Christian has five strawberry sweets and four orange sweets. He's going to eat two of the sweets at random. And we need to complete the probability tree diagram, which looks like this. Now this question starts off as normal. We need to work out the probability of the first sweet being strawberry or orange. Since there are five strawberry sweets and four orange sweets, there are nine sweets in total. If five of them are strawberry, the probability of strawberry must be five over nine. In a similar way, if four of them are orange, then the probability of an orange sweet is four over nine. When we look at the second branches, this is where things are a little bit more interesting. Let's imagine for the first sweet, we selected a strawberry one. So we went along this route here, and we want to work out the probability that the second sweet is also strawberry. So going along this route. If we draw out the bag, it has five strawberry sweets in it, and four orange sweets in it. Now because we've gone along this route, we've selected a strawberry first. So we're going to take that strawberry sweet and eat it. Now because we're going to eat it, we're not going to put it back in the bag. So this probability will now change. It will no longer be five over nine, which it was when we selected the first sweet. So if we now look at the bag, you can see that there's one fewer sweets in total. Previously it was nine, and now the total's eight. There's also one fewer strawberry sweets. There were five previously, and because we've eaten one, there's now four. So the probability of selecting a strawberry sweet now is 4 over 8. We call this a conditional probability because it depends on the conditions that have already happened. So in this one we'd already selected one strawberry sweet, so that changes the probability that the second one is also a strawberry sweet. Now let's look at the situation where we select a strawberry first, but select an orange second. So there's 4 orange and a total of 8, so the probability for orange is 4 over 8. Now let's switch over and look at the situation where the first sweet chosen was actually orange. So we need to put that strawberry sweet back in the bag and imagine we're right at the beginning again. So if instead the first sweet chosen was orange, we go down this route and we want to work out the probability that the second sweet is a strawberry given that we've already taken that orange one. So we need to take an orange sweet out of the bag and eat it. And now the bag looks like this. You can see there are now only three orange sweets, but there are still five strawberry sweets and eight sweets in total. So the probability of a strawberry now is 5 over 8. We can also complete this tree diagram by working out the probability of an orange sweet on the second pick, which is now 3 orange sweets out of a total of 8. And this is your completed probability tree diagram. Now let's have a look at a question using this tree diagram. So the question might say calculate the probability that Christian eats two sweets of the same flavour. So the first way this could happen is if the first sweet is strawberry and so is the second. So the probability of strawberry followed by strawberry. To do this, we take the probabilities and multiply them. So five over nine and four over eight, and we multiply them together. To multiply these, you just multiply numerators and then multiply denominators. So on the top, we have five times four, which is 20, and on the bottom, nine times eight, which is 72. Now there is another way of eating two sweets of the same flavor. That's an orange followed by an orange. So the probability of orange, orange is four over nine, multiplied by 3 over 8. Here we do 4 times 3, which is 12, and 9 times 8, which is 72. Since both of these are ways that we could eat two sweets of the same flavour, we add those probabilities together. 20 plus 12 is 32, and we keep the denominator the same, so 72. So this is the answer to the question. Sometimes when we have questions, a probability tree diagram is not necessarily the best approach. In this question, we have a bag that contains three blue, five red, and four green counters. And we're going to take three of the counters from the bag at random, but we're not going to replace them. We need to calculate the probability that all three counters are the same color. So if we did draw a probability tree, we'd have the first counter, and there are three options. The counter could be blue, red, or green. And then when we take the second counter, there are still three options, blue, red, or green. So off of each of these branches, we need three more, one for blue, one for red and one for green. And then we move on to the third counter and we need to do the same thing once again. There are still three options, blue, red, and green. So we have three branches coming from each of the previous branches, one for blue, one for red, and one for green. This tree diagram is really big and actually unnecessary for this question. This question asks us to calculate the probability that all three of the counters are the same color. To answer this, we only need a small part of the tree diagram. There are only three routes where all three counters are the same color. We could have the root which is blue, 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 then also the root which is red, 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 and the root which is green, green, green. So all of the other roots aren't actually needed in this question. 
So in many conditional probability questions, you won't actually use a tree diagram, you're just going to consider the roots that are necessary. So we've already identified the roots we need. We want the probability of blue followed by blue followed by blue. If we look at the counters, there are three blue, five red, and four green. That makes a total of 12 counters. And if three of them are blue, the probability of a blue on the first pick is three over 12. Then we need to multiply this by the probability of a blue on the second pick. For the second pick, there's going to be one fewer blue counters in the bag because we already took one on the first go. This also means there's one fewer total counters. So the number of blue counters moves down from three to two and the total number of counters moves down from 12 to 11. So the probability of a blue on the second pick is two over 11. And the same thing happens on the next pick. So we need to multiply by the probability of a blue on the third pick. Now there are two blue counters removed from the bag, so there's only one left. There's also one fewer counters, so in total there's now 10 counters rather than 11. So the probability of a blue on the final pick goes down to one over 10. We can multiply these together by multiplying all of the numerators, so three times two times one, which gives you six, and all of the denominators, 12 times 11 times 10, and use your calculator for this, it will give you 1,320. So that's the probability of blue, blue, blue. We just do the same process for red, 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 and in a moment, green, green, green. So the probability of a red on the first pick, well, there's five of them, and 12 counters in total, so five over 12. Then we multiply this by the red on the second pick. So since there's one fewer reds, there's now four in total, and there's one fewer counters in total, so that's a total of 11. Then we multiply this by the probability of a red on the third pick. We've taken another red out, so there's now three in total, and the total number of counters has gone down to 10. To multiply these, you multiply five times four times three, which gives you 60, and 12 times 11 times 10 is as it was before, one, three, 20. Now we can do probability of green, green, green. There are four greens, so it'll be four over 12 on the first go. Then we multiply this by the green on the second go. There's one fewer green, so that goes down to three, and one fewer counters in total, so that becomes 11. And we multiply this by green on the final go, the number of green counters has gone down to two, and the total number of counters down to 10. Four times three times two gives you 24, and over one, three, 20. All of these roots work, so we need to add all of those probabilities together. To do this, you just add six, 60, and 24, which gives you 90, and it's over one, three, 20. So that's the answer to this question. You can see we didn't need the probability tree diagram at all. Now let's have a look at a harder question. In this question, we have a game at a fair that has 20 face down cards. Players will select three of the cards to turn over. Four of the cards say win and the rest say lose. We need to work out the probability that the player turns over exactly two win cards. So the player is going to select three cards to turn over and we want two of them to be a win. Well, if two of them say win, the other one must say lose. So one way of doing this is if the first two cards say win and the next one says lose. So that's the probability of win, win, lose. What's the probability we win when we take the first card? Well, there are four wins and 20 cards in total, so it would be four over 20. What's the probability the second card is also a win, given that we've just taken one of the win cards? Well, the number of win cards has now gone down to three, and the total number of cards has gone down as well to 19. So we'd multiply this by three over 19. Now we want to multiply this by the probability of a lose on the final card. So we haven't taken any of the lose cards at all, so they're still all in play. If there were 20 cards at the start and four of them said win, 16 of them said lose. So it will be 16 over the total number of cards, and that has gone down by one as well since we've taken two, so that's now 18. If you multiply all of the numerators, for this question you'll get 192, and all of the denominators you'll get 6840. Now that isn't the only way of selecting two win cards. We could instead have the first card being a win, the second card being a lose, and the third card being a win. So what's the probability of this? Well, the first card being a win is still four over 20. We did that before. Then we need to multiply this by the probability that the second card is a lose. Well, we haven't selected any lose cards so far, so there's still 16 of them, but one of the win cards is gone, so the total number of cards is now at 19. Then we multiply this by winning on the final one. Well, we've already selected one of the win cards, so that's gone down to three, and the total number of cards has gone down to 18 since we've selected two cards already. Multiply all of this together and you actually get the same result, 192 over 6840. And it's a similar situation for the final way. Instead of having win, win, lose, or win, lose, win, we could lose on the first card, but then win on the last two. The probability of losing on the first card is 16 over 20. 
We multiply this by the probability of winning on the second card. There's still four win cards, so it's four over 19. And finally, the probability of winning on the third card. Well, we've taken one of the wins out already, so there's now three of those. And it's over 18 since two cards have been taken. Multiply all of this, and once again, you get the same number. 192 over 6840. Since these are all examples of picking two of the win cards, we add all of those probabilities together. And this gives you a total of 576 over 6840. Now we're going to stick with this game, but complicate the situation a little bit. This time we're going to be told that if any of the cards turned over say lose, the player loses the game. And we need to work out the probability that the player loses the game. So we need to consider all of the ways that the player could lose the game. Well, if all three of the cards they turn over say lose, they've definitely lost the game. So the probability of lose, lose, lose is important. They could also lose by turning over two lose cards and one win. So that could be lose, lose, win. You could also do that one another way. It could be lose, win, lose. And it could even be winning first and then two more loses. But they also lose if they just turn over one lose card. So it could be lose, win, win. Or even win, lose, win or even win, win, lose. In all of these situations, the player turns over a lose card, so they're going to lose. So it looks like we're going to need to work out all seven of these probabilities and add them together. Well, we could actually do this question in a different way. Rather than thinking about the ways they lose, we could think about the opposite. We could think about the ways that they win. And then we could do the probability of losing is one take away the probability of winning. Now, fortunately, there's only one way of winning. We can't get a lose card, so they must all be win. So let's work out the probability of win, win, win. The probability of winning on the first go, well that's 4 over 20. Then if we take out one of those win cards, it goes down to 3 over 19. Then if we've taken out two of the win cards, it goes down to 2 over 18. If you multiply all of these together, you get the probability of winning, which is 24 over 6840. So the probability of losing will be 1 subtract this fraction. So the probability of losing is 1 take away 24 over 6840, which gives you the answer 6816 over 6840. So sometimes with questions where there are lots of different outcomes, it's worth considering all of the other outcomes instead and subtracting that from 1. Let's have a look at another example. So in this question we've got 8 numbered counters and they're put into a bag, and these are the numbers on those counters. We're going to take 2 of the counters at random, and we're going to work out the probability that the sum of the counters is equal to 5. So let's think about all of the ways we could pick two of these counters that add up to make five and find their probabilities. Well, first of all, we could pick a one and then a four. That would make a total of five. So let's work out this probability. I can see there are two counters that are number one and in total eight counters. So the probability of getting a one is two over eight. Then if we look at getting a four on the second go, well, there are still four of those, but one of the one counters has been taken out. So there are seven counters in total now and not eight. So we need to multiply this by four over seven. If you multiply this, you get 8 over 56. Another way to get a total of 5 is picking a 4 first and then a 1. The probability of getting a 4 on the first go, well there are 4 of those, so 4 over 8. And then we multiply this by the probability of getting a 1 on the second go. There are 2 1s and 7 counters in total, so 2 over 7. 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times 7 is 56, so it's 8 over 56 once again. Now are there any other ways? Well, we could get a 2 on the first pick and a 3 on the second. Since there's only one 2, the probability of a 2 is just 1 over 8. Now there's only actually one 3 as well, so we're going to multiply this by 1 over 7 since we've taken away one of the counters. 1 times 1 is 1, and 8 times 7 is 56. Now of course we could also have that one the other way around as well. We could pick a 3 first, and then a 2 second. This would be 1 over 8 multiplied by 1 over 7, which is also 1 over 56. These are all of the ways of getting a total of 5, so if we add these probabilities together, we get the answer, which is 18 over 56. Now let's stick with this bag of counters, but try another question. This time we're going to work out the probability that the sum of the two counters is even. Now at first glance, it looks like we need to consider all of the different possibilities. So we could do 1 add 1, 1 add 3, 3 add 1, and so on. But actually, there's a faster way of doing a question like this. When we add together two numbers and the result is even, the numbers must both be even or both be odd. So an even number plus an even number will give you an even number, and an odd number plus an odd number will give you an odd number. If one of them's odd and one of them's even, the total will be odd. So let's work out the probability of even followed by even. The probability the first number is an even number, well let's look at all of the even numbers, there are five of those, so five over eight. 
then if we take away one of those even numbers, the probability of even on the second go will go down to 4 over 7. So the probability of even followed by even will be 20 over 56. Then if we look at the probability of odd odd, well this time there are only 3 odd numbers, so the probability of odd on the first go is 3 over 8, and we multiply this by the probability of odd on the second go, we've taken out one of those odd numbers, so it goes down to 2 over 7. And this gives you 6 over 56. Then all we need to do is add these two probabilities together, and that gives you 26 over 56. Sticking with this bag once again, we're going to try another question. This time, work out the probability that the first counter has a lower number than the second. Now people tend to find this one really difficult to do. I'm going to break it down in the following way. Let's imagine the situation where the first counter selected is number 1. We need this to be lower than the second counter, so the second counter could be any of the other numbers, just not 1. So we could have 1 in 2, 1 in 3, or 1 in 4. Now we don't need to do all three of those situations, we can summarise it in 1. The probability of getting a 1 on the first go, and a number greater than 1 on the second go. The probability of a 1 on the first go, well there's two of those, so it's 2 over 8. Then if we take one of those 1s away, the probability of a number that's greater than 1 on the second go is all of these numbers here, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but there's one fewer numbers in total, so 6 out of 7. If you multiply these, you get 12 over 56. So that's the situation where the first counter selected was a 1. What if instead the first counter selected was a 2, and the second one is some number that's greater than 2? So the probability of a 2 on the first go, well there's only one of those, so it's 1 over 8. And for the second go, we're looking for the numbers that are greater than 2, so that's the 3 and all of the 4s. There are 5 of those in total, so it's 5 over 7. Remember we took out the 2. If you multiply these, you get 5 over 56. Then let's imagine we select a 3 on the first go. And the second number needs to be a number that's greater than 3. So we've only got 4 to choose from there. So the probability of a 3 on the first go, well there's one of those, so it's 1 over 8. And the probability of a 4 on the second go, well there's 4 of those, and 1 fewer counters in total, so 4 over 7. Multiply these and you get 4 over 56. Now if you think about it, it's not possible to select a 4 on the first go, because the second counter can't be greater than 4. So we don't need to consider that situation, so these are all of the probabilities we need, so we add those together. If you add these together, you get 21 over 56, and that's the answer to this question. We're now going to do one final question, again using this scenario. So this time work out the probability that the total of the two counters is less than 7. So let's try and write down which situations we're looking for. Well we've got 1 and 1, that's definitely less than 7. 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 1 and 4, they're all less than 7. What about 2 and 1? 2 and 3, 2 and 4, that's 6, that's still less than 7. 3 and 1, that works. 3 and 2, 4 and 1, and 4 and 2. Now these are all of the ways where the total is less than 7. That's quite a lot of ways for us to work out again, 11 different probabilities. What if we thought about the opposite situation? So rather than the total being less than 7, the total is 7 or more. So let's have a look. Well first of all, we could get a total of exactly 7 by doing a 3 followed by a 4. There's only one 3, so the probability of a 3 is 1 over 8, and we multiply this by the probability of a 4, there's 4 of those, and we've already taken one of the counters out, so 4 over 7. This gives you 4 over 56. Now we could have the same situation the other way around, so a 4 first and then a 3, and this would be 4 over 8, multiplied by 1 over 7. And this also gives you 4 over 56. Now we could also have a total that's greater than 8, there's only one way of doing that, it's a 4 followed by a 4. So the probability of a 4 on the first go is 4 over 8, and we multiply this by the probability of a 4 on the second go. Now we've taken one of the 4s out, so there's only 3 of them now, and there's also one fewer counters in total, so 7. So we do 4 times 3, which is 12, and 8 times 7, which is 56. So if we add all of these probabilities together, we get a total of 20 over 56. This is the probability that the total of the counters is 7 or more. We want the total to be less than 7, so if we subtract this from 1, we'll get our answer. So the probability that the total is less than 7 is 1 take away this fraction, which gives you 36 over 56. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and go and try the exam questions in this video's description.